Hello, I'm Jesse. Hi, I'm Michaela. Hi, I'm Rory. Hi, I'm Rachel, and we're a part of End of the World Events, and you're listening to Chasing Dreams with Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Hey, Dream Chasers. This is Amy J, and thank you so much for tuning in to episode 132 of Chasing Dreams. This episode is a little bit different, guys. It's kind of exciting for me. Uh, but before we go and talk about that, this episode is sponsored by the Patreon campaign supporters. Thanks to all of you for supporting the mission to inspire, equip, and empower people to chase their dreams. You guys can find all of our supporters over at amyj21.com slash supporters. In honor and recognition of Women's History Month, I not only have one amazing woman for you guys today, I have four of six, okay? So I couldn't get everyone because they're doing phenomenal things and people are busy, but four of six, that's the majority. And so you heard them in the beginning, you heard their drop. I just want to introduce you quickly because we want to get straight to the topics, to Michaela, Rachel, Jesse, and Rory, all doing different things all across the country. Rachel is grew up in rural Arizona. She recently graduated with a bachelor's in veterinary school science and her daytime job is microbiology research. Jesse Suarez is born and raised Floridian. She recently spent her final semester abroad in London before graduating from Florida State University with a BA in theater. Rory is from Texas, but currently lives in the Los Angeles area. I'm not going to say a little bit more because it's going to kind of give it away. And then Michaela Mm -hmm. grew up in Papua New Guinea and now lives in rural southeastern Arizona. So these ladies have come together to represent a endeavor, as you heard, end of the world events. And they are putting together what is a convention, which they call Congata and is a unique fan experience designed to bring the 100 fandom together. So, ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. How are you? Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank yeah. you so much for having us. So I came across your Kickstarter. You guys began a Kickstarter probably, I want to say six months, eight months, something like that ago. And you were raising money for this convention. And I am a fan of the hundred. I enjoy the show. Loved it since uh, season two is kind of when mm-hmm. I came in. And, yeah. you know, I usually am just a, a TV watcher. The only big convention I've gone to is Comic-Con in New York, Comic-Con in California. And you guys are doing something different. I mean, with the show. Well, I guess, first of all, can someone talk a little bit about what the hundred, the show, the hundred is about? Michaela, do you want to take it away? (laughs) Sure, I can do that. Um, Well, basically, the premise is that um, it's in the set in the future. And basically, 99 years before there was a nuclear apocalypse which rendered the earth uninhabitable, or so they thought. The survivors were in space, but they were running out of oxygen. Their their, um, space station was failing. So they send down 100 juvenile delinquents, hence the name the 100, to the ground to find out if it's survivable, and if not, they're expendable. And it gives the rest of them more time. And so like, that's the basic premise of the show, but it's gone like, all sorts of crazy directions, like very sci-fi, different, like, you know, an AI, there's horror a bit. It's lots of genres. It's not a kid's show, one. right? Yeah, it, for it, sure. Yeah, not at all. It's <laughs> not at all a kid's more. show. And it's based yeah. off the book series, The Hundred by Cass Morgan. And yes. w- yeah. would you say it's the same book or is it kind of its own thing? But with oh, no, touches? it's its own thing. We okay. okay. diverged. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't read the books, but I think the I first, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, from what I understand, they uh, like came out around the same time. So they're not really, yeah. After the first premise, they don't really overlap much. Okay. So both kind yeah, of got diverted, they, right? The, the, their own yeah. ways. Yeah. I see. And now it's in, it's about to head into season five. 
I yep. think. Yes. Right? So, yep. Yes. April. April 24th. Uh, April yep. 24th, all- which we're counting down. <laughs> <laughs> the days are kind of upon us, which will be, you know, this episode is airing in March. So you still a little bit of ways to go before the episodes come back. But, you know, five seasons, four that have aired that people have seen that people have enjoyed and some not so much and whatever the case mm-hmm. is. But you guys <laughs> at the end of, I guess, four years have decided to put this event together, run a Kickstarter campaign to raise money, not just any money. You guys raised from a $15,000 goal, $17,000 to do this, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, that's a lot of money. And that's, that's a a big credit to what you guys are are doing. And I got to ask, why are you doing this? Because we love the show. (laughs) Uh, I guess uh, there's a ton of reasons that go into wanting to host a convention. Of course, we want to support the cast and crew who, um, put together this incredible show that has um, a ton of importance for different reasons to different people. And of course, um, just getting to know people who enjoy the same things as you is incredible. You know, some people um, in their life might have trouble connecting or being able to relate. So they really turn to TV and books. And we just want to be able to bring people together and all these different fans um, who would relate to each other and enjoy celebrating the show and everyone who um, puts their time into it, basically. Now, has the response been what you expected when you first came together with this idea? Because there are actually conventions out there already, right? Um, Small meet and greets here and there. And I think uh, Unity Day is just passed, right? In Canada? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So you're having this, you guys put this together. Is it what you thought you would get? We were kind of blown Ooh. away by the response the Kickstarter got. I think we were we hit the fifteen thousand mark. I think like halfway through the month, like it was pretty crazy. We've had like cast members tweeting about us, supporting us, which we're just you know and sh- still kind of in shock over. Like, what? yeah, I, be- I believe and I saw then, Adina uh, Porter. Yeah. Adina Porter yeah, supported she you guys. Like, oh, she's been a she huge, was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She's she, like a uh, fairy con mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like a den mother, but that's, that's awesome. She, she, so she's your unofficial kind of guide and supporter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so you have this response. Have the fans been receptive to what you're doing? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think There's, for the most part. Yeah. Now mm-hmm, you say the, for the most part and I, cause <laughs> we got to be honest, right? Not everything's going to be a hundred percent roses. <laughs> well, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. But, there's always going to be a certain amount of uncertainty, um, mm-hmm. especially since last year, there were a couple of failed convention efforts. So understandably people are a little skeptical when being approached with this new huge thing that requires money. So that's completely understandable. So we've really had to work to, um, build and maintain credibility and that kind of thing. So that was actually mm-hmm. my next mm-hmm. question. Does mm-hmm. that make you work twice as hard to kind of silence the doubters, so to speak, or just put, put to ease their, their nerves? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Is there it kind of um, motivates us to work even harder in a way? Like to prove the doubters wrong in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you guys aren't doing this full time. Or is it, are, let me actually not assume. Are any of you doing this full time? <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> no, no. We are not getting any money out of this. In fact, no, we're, we're not putting our paid. own money into it. And we all have oh, yeah. daytime jobs. So this is a hobby that's kind of really grown wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's actually interesting. So you're, I mean, it's essentially an endeavor result, a business that you've created. But if you mm-hmm. call it a hobby or a business because you're prof- putting on a professional event, you know, the fact that you're doing this in your free time, you guys not want to relax? Is that what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm trying to uh, understand. Yeah, I think. Oh, why don't you uh, is- take this one, Jesse? Because you just came oh, out yeah. of school too. Yeah. Oh, I mean. It's not that we don't want to relax, but we want, you know, (laughs) I'd love to relax, but, you know, we want to make this the best it can be because we're really passionate about the show and we've been, we've all been to a lot of different conventions and we just want to make this special and unique in terms of cons, but also still that fun, like, like, uh, 
we said before, like the friendly and I guess comforting experience. And that takes a lot of work, but it's, it's hard, but it's, it's good. It makes us feel good. So it's not. So it doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world. It's not the worst thing. Mm -hmm. It's not work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I I mean, sure. There's really stressful moments. Yeah. Oh yeah. Moments you just kind of want to bang your head on the table, but um, overall, I would have to say, at least for me, it's been pretty rewarding just seeing the response from everyone, the cast, and you know our future attendees. And I've been able to work with these great ladies. So overall, I think it's been fun. I mean, it is quite successful because I just got my ticket in the email for. My order was complete. I got my ticket for June 22nd. So, I mean, you're doing something right. <laughs> and then, I mean, we're it's out there. Appreciate that. Well, <laughs> good. Yeah. We're, we're glad. <laughs> right. Something's working. So kudos to you. But I mean, this is interesting because there's all I have are four of the six people that are that are working this. And the fact that less than two hands are putting an event of such magnitude. Um, Sam and Nikki couldn't make it. but why don't you guys, can someone talk about how you guys all came together for this? Did you meet at a con? Like, were you friends beforehand? What was the story there? We, we mostly met actually at a convention um, last year in January. It was the Unity Days convention. Um, we all met there and had a blast. And we thought, why isn't there a convention like this in the United States? So we kind of let, well, Rory and I kind of first started talking about it. And we really decided to like really pursue it in last April. And then like, I already, I've known Rachel for years. So she kind of joined in. And then I kind of, I think we, we put out like a poll about like what people would want to see. And a couple of people responded for like saying they could help out. Like um, Jesse responded to do like graphics and stuff. And yeah, it just kind of like, we kind of brought different friends along and, we've all been, we all work really well together and yeah. It was bonding over not having money for all of these conventions. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. For sure. It's so expensive exactly. to do international conventions and mm-hmm. yeah, we really were like, all right, let's fix this. It's <laughs> actually surprising that you guys are doing the first, you know, soul. I mean, there's uh, heroes and villains and stuff like that, but this is the first show specific convention in the u.s that's actually surprising another convention did pop up a few weeks ago that's going to be in boston and in like mid-march but yeah we we uh started ours like it was going to be the first so it'll be the second (laughs) yeah well the first i guess in training that or preparation yeah yeah. yeah, yes yeah (laughs) you announced that makes me feel better yeah you announced it first i mean we were aware of it first even though the date yeah but i think that that you had to Mm. right I think if the show airs in April, you guys might be like towards the season finale, maybe yeah. when yeah. it airs, which is kind of cool if you have a viewing party. Hint, hint. Yeah, if we can get nudge, the licensing nudge. for that. That would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that would be a we lot just, of fun. But just gather in a hotel room. <laughs> hey, <Yeah>. why <laughs> not? official viewing party. <laughs> Everybody gasping mm-hmm. at the same time. <gasps> It'd be amazing. Great. But I, I have to ask this because, you know, oftentimes when women get together, the thought is there's going to be cat fights. There's going to be, you know, disagreements. People can't really work together as women and not have problems. And that's a stereotype. That's misconception in my thoughts. But what about for you? Has it been that case? Have you had that those kind of issues working together? No, I, mean, um, I think we've like, you know, every once in a while we can have disagreements, but we're all adults and we have all been great at you know, not just saying, oh, that's wrong. Like we say our piece, we say why, you know, we think there's a better alternative, that kind of thing. It's not just, you know, petty going back and forth. Um, So yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely, you know, kind of a, a sad stereotype and we've Mm -hmm. been able to do it with six females. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. And not just that you guys are around the country. You're around the (laughs) North America, around the world. (laughs) Yeah. You're around North America. Right, because uh, Nikki's actually well, in London. Oh, so around the world, mm-hmm. Nikki's yeah, in London. Nikki, Sam is yeah, from Calgary, yeah, Canada. right? Canada. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you got yes. all these points and references and time zones. How do you manage yeah. that? 
I think a big credit goes to Nikki for never sleeping. <laughs> <That's Yeah. right. laughs> Oh, so she's the sacrificial one. She always manages to chime in and be present. And she's, you know, eight hours ahead of us. I don't know how she does it, but um, (laughs) yeah, we've all been great at, I think, sacrificing, Mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of time and sleep to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I, I, when you say it out loud, like how spread out we are, I don't know how we do it. (laughs) No, I know. Yeah, it's crazy. But we're all pretty good at communicating, even if we have like different communication styles. Like, of course, at the beginning, it took a little, you know, a little getting used to and figuring out what was going to work. But I think we're running pretty smoothly. See, and I think that's honest, because if you told me that everything was fine the the whole time, I'd be like, really, really? Was it? (laughs) Was it, though? But to have some growing pains, I think, is natural, if not normal. For any group, to be honest, not just women, but any group of people that get together to plan something and organize something, especially of this magnitude. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you guys yeah, ever think, sure. no, let's not, maybe we should cancel it? Did that ever come to your thought? <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on. There's a little, there's a big pause here. <laughs> I, I, I feel like it's more, it's not like, um, we should cancel this. It's more of a, what did we get ourselves into? Wow. Right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely moments where I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and there's been some moments of like, where do we go from here? But then we, there's like a breakthrough and we keep going. And I don't think we've ever thought about canceling it, but it's just been like a there's hiccups and then we move on. Yeah. Yeah. For a while recently, we did have a, a lot of roadblocks for a while. And it was just like nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And our fans are kind of like when are we getting another announcement and stuff? And then all of a sudden, just in the last like week and a half or something, everything started like just falling into place. And so we're super excited about that. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that in a moment. You guys have, (laughs) right. I mean, there are a few things to talk about, but you have Aaron Ginsburg, Wade McIntyre from the writing of the show coming on. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have Nadia Hilker, Lindsay Morgan, Mm -hmm. Eli Gorey, Richard Harmon, and right at the moment, Sachin Sahel, as of this recording. Yes. 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 Say what? Like, <laughs> like it's, it's like, these aren't just background actors. These are the actors. Mm-hmm. Not all the main actors. Oh, yes. but, I mean, this is amazing. Like some geez, of the characters are dead, but you know, they're still great for cons and they're great for fan. They're fan favorites. I mean, oh yeah. Oh yeah, people yeah, love them. I love them. Especially <laughs> Eli. Um, yeah. Well, yes, he had a huge part in the books, but unfortunately, in the show, his character died early on. Mm-hmm. But you, if you go on spoiler uh, alert, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> if you go online to like Tumblr or even like fan fictions, Wells still plays an integral part in everyone's yeah. mind. Or, Everyone um, loves him. The hundred um, fandom. So I'm excited that we were able to get him because this will be his mm-hmm. first mention. Like ever so oh, it'll wow. be interesting to see how everyone yeah. acts to him so mm-hmm. not to like encourage others but did you stalk these guys and get them guys i mean <laughs> not to give away your secrets but overall <laughs> what is oh. the concept like i would have been intimidated like i'm gonna put a con together but i need to get these guests these these people who are, are part of the show to get some kind of credibility like that would have intimidated me yeah, I yeah. think um, this would be a good one for Rory because she has a yeah. lot of background oh. on the convention scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Rory, um, you've been nominated. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of times with it is you actually contact um, like managers and agents. Like you don't contact the person directly. Um, and just actually going to give a shout out to, um, I don't do subtle uh, management, especially yes. Daniel. Yes. Uh, Daniel and Laney, they are amazing. They actually have a lot of um, the cast from The 100. And so they are incredible. They work specifically with um, actors, like when they go to things like conventions and stuff like that. Um, and then there's other times where you're kind of directly talking to like, their actual like manager manager that takes care of their entire um, like career. Um, And without giving anybody away this past week, I've been emailing, I emailed a manager 
And the manager actually forwarded me to the actor. <laughs> oh, wow. So that was kind of intimidating because I'm sitting here like, okay, I'm used to like emailing like the people, quote unquote, not the um, actual talent. Like, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's got to be crazy. Oh, mm. that. That was we were all like, is this a scam? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like double checking everything. I'm like, this signs up, this signs up. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah. can we expect to see more guests or are, are we at the limit or is there a limit? Uh, we definitely have more in the works. Um, for sure, one more um, actual like actor though we do help hope to get maybe some more of the behind the scenes people to come. Um, but really what it comes down to is uh, ticket sales. As with any convention, the more we sell, the more people we can get. Um, so if we end up having a really good turnout, then we could definitely see um, a lot more people present than what, what, than what we had initially planned for. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I, I mean, I didn't even know there were, was, a group of people that did that. I mean, there's just so many layers just from what you're saying. Yeah. Of what could be done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, but how Daniel did you, and Lainey. How, oh, sorry. How, how do you learn that? Um, I, I guess it comes down to kind of like experience. Um, like we've all attended conventions and the hundred fandoms really cool because of the appearance management is so involved. Like I knew who Lainey was of IDDS um, because of going to a convention and she was super fun hanging out with the actors, hanging out with the attendees, that kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. that's how I kind of knew that there was, you know, that Avenue that you had to go through. I can't speak for anyone else though, but I definitely had to kind of like experience the convention to understand how it all worked. Yeah, it's a whole different oh, world. Yeah. So it's it's like once you like we, we're kind of used to it now, but it's still like, yeah, you wouldn't. There's a lot of behind the scenes goings on that you wouldn't maybe expect. And I, I guess one of them is, I mean, because people are like, they're just using this to make money. You guys said earlier, you're not making anything out of this. What does the money that you've raised and that you said ticket sales, what does that go to so that people understand this isn't something that you're just trying to, you know, milk? Rachel's the accountant, so <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll take the now. Fun you've one. been nominated. <laughs> um, the majority um, of the funds typically go go to like deposits. So you have the venue deposit, which is in our case a hotel. It goes towards you know catering, sleeper rooms, the actual venue rooms, that kind of thing. And then you have the deposits for um, the guests themselves. I think a lot of attendees might not realize that uh, they do get paid up front in most cases. Um, so when people are wondering like, oh, how can you haven't, you know, announced anyone else yet? Um, you had a Kickstarter. That's true, but we do need, you know, the additional funds from ticket sales to be able to progress in booking more people. And then th- of course there's, you know, smaller things that come with businesses that, you know, you mm-hmm. have to maintain bank accounts, that kind of thing. Um, and there's fees for everything, like even just having, you know, a ticket site, um, they, they bill you, um, in our case, we have like a monthly subscription. There was website fees. Like there's, there's so much money <laughs> yeah. but to say most of the money definitely goes towards the, the venue and then the guests. So I guess it's a testament that you guys are taking on this. I mean, nobody wants to be responsible for all that. <laughs> Let's be honest. No, I don't, I don't want to be responsible for all that. But the fact that you are, uh, so thank you in advance. Appreciate you taking that on. Uh, but it's not just all about the show. I mean, you guys also have a few charitable donations of sorts or charitable, um, what is it, collaborations, I guess. Yes. Can we talk about yeah. that a little bit? What, what yes. made you want to do that? Rory is actually um, kind of heading up the the charity department, so I'll <laughs> let her go with this one. So, Rory, why have a charity department? Um, I think it's like really. Oh God. Okay. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> this is this is where you learn. I'm not smooth. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of it has to do with 
the, so the two charities that we have um, is the Jasper Jordan Project and the uh, Battle Scars Project, which both deal with things that not only affected or affects characters in the show, but actually has a lot of effect on the fandom. And so I think kind of having the ability for the fans to, you know, have an opportunity to raise money for something that is kind of intricately connected to the show and the fandom as well is kind of a really great thing to have. Um, Especially since like, there's often a lot of support for those kinds of things within the fandom. And so a lot of it has to do with just that is kind of bringing everybody together to raise money for these causes that are like really kind of near and dear and special to the hundred. Well, I guess we don't realize that, right? When you're watching a TV show that it can have an effect on Mm -hmm. the audience. Yeah, it's crazy just to realize the profound impact that a single TV show has on all of these, you know, young adults, adults and teenagers. Um, I haven't in my past, I haven't been that super into a television show like ever. And it was just crazy entering this fandom um how supportive everyone is of each other and the fact that the show hits on a lot of real life issues that um mean a lot to the people watching the show so i think that's huge and that's definitely why we wanted to have some sort of charity thing because we want to be able to give back and support those people who are you know getting something out of this tv show and the charities you've actually chosen uh the Jasper Jordan project and Battle Scars project um, do you mind talking a little bit? Cause I think that the reasoning behind these causes and what they do is something I think people need to understand and hopefully help support if you guys will try and have the links to those charities in the show notes. So if you, because I think, um, at least, especially with the Jasper Jordan project, uh, and the battle scars project, uh, it affects people more than we realize. Can you talk a little bit about mm-hmm. what, even though you're not, um, connected to it, but what that those projects are a little bit. Um, I can yeah. talk about, uh, yeah, Rory can go, talk go. about the, <laughs> okay. Rory can talk about the, um, about the Jasper Jordan project and I can talk about the uh, battle scars project. Sounds great. So with the battle scars project, it raises money and awareness um, for chronic pain and for the eye pain foundation. And so basically, you know, just obviously rave in with her and it's based on the quote, you know, we all have battle scars. And Raven is a character that resonates a lot with me personally because I'm also disabled and have chronic pain. So yeah, raising money for chronic pain awareness, disability awareness is a really important thing to me because a lot of times when we're talking about intersectionality, disability or chronic pain gets left off the table. And so like, you know, a lot of people have chronic pain, but it's not something that a lot of people are widely aware of. So many fans of the show who have um, disabilities or chronic pain, like really relate to Raven. So that's why we wanted to choose that one because it's a big topic for fans of the hundred and who would like, I don't think anyone's not a fan of Raven. So, and that's actually <laughs> Everyone loves a Raven. great point. I mean, one, everybody I loves love Raven, Raven, but the fact that um, unless you have a cast on or some kind of visible uh, mm-hmm. You know, people don't realize there are people suffering in silence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I- I'm really glad you guys are, are working with that one. Then Rory, can you talk a little bit about Jasper Jordan Project? Um, yeah. So it raises money for the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. Um, and I think it's kind of important to point out that not only um, the Jasper Jordan Project, but the Battle Scars Project were actually started also by fans of the show. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and so the Jasper Jordan project, um, spoiler alert, um, kind of came to be after Jasper's death, after his suicide on the show. Um, and I know like, especially with season three, that's like really when Jasper's, um, 
PTSD and, you know, his depression, stuff like that really started coming to a forefront in the show, which he's always had it like since day one on the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, But there had been a lot of negativity from people. Like I, I don't want to call them fans because the way that they went about saying things, I'm like, it really rubbed me in a lot of people the wrong way of, the way that they were treating Jasper's character in the sense of like kind of knocking down that this, you know, 15, 16 year old kid has dismissing a mental ill. Yes. Like he Mm -hmm. has a mental illness and um, how that kind of reflected back on people in the fandom like me who actually do suffer from mental illness. And I've had it, I've had generalized anxiety and depression for almost 10 years now. And so kind of having that representation on the screen was amazing in the way that they were doing it. Like they were holding nothing back. Like, so you would say it was accurate. It. Oh, it very accurate. Mm-hmm. And of course everybody experiences it differently and handles it differently, mm-hmm. but they weren't afraid to show the ugly side of it. Um, and so I, I just kind of, once this, um, once I saw that they had this charity for that was raising money for it, I was like, well, this is kind of amazing. Like, you know, I never really saw too much talking about that kind of, I wouldn't say aspect, but like not really anybody really talking about that. And I still don't see that many people talking about it. And I feel the same and kind of the same way with going back to the Battle Squad Project. Like I still don't see that many people talking about it. Like, for the disability stuff. So I kind of really like that we're raising awareness for both of these um, things. Absolutely. And, you know, not to justify haters or detractors, uh, essentially, but I I think there is something to the fact that people don't understand. There is an ignorance around it and we don't have those conversations, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. the fact that Mm -hmm. this charity had to be had, um, that, uh, Supergirl actor Chris Wood had to start his uh, I Don't Mind initiative to try to begin making conversations around mental health more normalized, more open. You know, it, it's something that I mean, when I first saw it, I was blown away, to be honest. And I was like, oh, my God. And then only did I realize there are others like him that are going through this. We just don't realize, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and so I, I think the fact that you're doing this, that you're raising awareness and um, funds for these important causes is great. And the fact that you felt the need to do so, you know, cause you didn't have to, you didn't have to do that with, with your convention. And the fact that you did, I think is a testament to taking steps towards helping make this stuff more aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, so what can you tell us, you know, after working so hard and you're still planning, uh, this episode will be airing in March. Is there anything you could hint to us about what we can expect that we haven't heard about already? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think. Um, so yeah. how I guess to explain kind of how the whole um, booking deal works is that there's, of course, a contract and then a deposit. And those two things usually have to be made and done before being able to advertise the participation of anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do have someone lined up. That's fair. (laughs) (laughs) I like how you're doing this. Go ahead. Keep going. (laughs) We can't say any more because not all, (laughs) you know, the T's have been crossed. I's haven't been dotted yet. Um, but I, I am pretty confident that by the time this airs that we will have someone very exciting. Yeah. All right, guys, I tried. I tried. I did. <laughs> but that was a valiant, valiant effort on your part to, to try to make it work. I do appreciate that. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I do normally do something at the end where I ask everybody, you know, what is it that you would tell someone who's chasing their dream? Because what you're doing seems like a dream project for you. I mean, the fact that you love the show, that you're doing this. Is that is that fair to say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> so in doing that, let me ask each of you and you can take your turn turns answering the question and think about this. Think about the reason you decided to do this, the 
moment you leapt in, took that leap of faith to make it happen, that you did the Kickstarter, you had the support of the show, the fans, that you're in the middle of planning all of this, you have people locked in and all that. So keeping all of that in the mind, if someone were to tell you, hey, I have a dream, I want to, I want to go pursue it, not sure, what would you tell them? Like, what would you say to someone who wants to chase their dream and is trying to figure it out? And, and go ahead, take turns and probably, probably say who you are so people at home can tell whose advice is different. I guess I can go. This is Rachel. Um, I guess my biggest piece of advice is go for it. I mean, depending on your views, we're only on this earth once. And um, I feel like our lives are too short to just, you know, kind of not do what interests us. Like I want to go to medical school and I'm working towards that, but I know that's going to take up a lot of time and I won't have um, pretty much any free time. So when they brought this idea to me, I was like, Hey, why not? I mean, I might not be able to do this in 10 years, so I'm going to go for it. So if, if there's something that really interests you and that you're passionate about, you should go for it. Um, there's going to be a lot of roadblocks and, um, even people that might say you can't do this, but you just got to push through it, surround yourselves with supportive people and, um, people that will, you know, help you along the way and ignore the haters. <laughs> this is Michaela. And I would also echo what Rachel just said about surrounding yourself with good people. Like none of this would have been possible just like was one of us or a few of us on our own. Like every single person on this team is a needed part of it. Like if we didn't have Rachel, we wouldn't have someone doing all the like the legal stuff and the and the, you know, money stuff. We didn't have Rory. We wouldn't have someone on site and we wouldn't have someone like, yeah, who can go to the places who can, and who already has industry contacts. If we didn't have Jesse, we wouldn't have our amazing logos and great social media. Nikki also does that. Sam also works on the budget. Like every single person in this is like, a vital part. And so you just surround yourself with good people who you can rely on to help you. And yeah, that's like the biggest thing. Uh, This is Jesse. I'm going to rely on two cliches, uh, which are (laughs) don't give up and also don't be your own worst enemy. Um, And that's more uh, from my personal experience with this is uh, because I have pretty severe anxiety. And as we said before, sometimes this can be a little stressful <laughs> as um, any thing, any big goal will be. And as Rachel can attest, I kind of come running, uh, freaking out. And then eventually I calm down. But uh, <laughs> in the cutest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but, you know, it, it'll be hard, but it'll be more than worth it. And it's so rewarding to go after what you want. So don't stand in your own way. Or at least get out of your own way when you know that you're standing there. So yeah, that's probably all I have. <laughs> so point good. though. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I guess that leaves me. Um, this is Rory. <laughs> and you know, I would echo everything that they've said. And I want to add on kind of going off of Jesse's like, don't stand in your own way, is also know when to um step away for a few minutes or like even a True. day. Cause you know, it, it can be very stressful find something that isn't related to what you're working on that you can kind of go to and escape to for a little bit, because that is a very good thing to have. Like uh, I go to a lot of comedy, like I do a lot of improv shows out here in LA and there will be days where it's super stressful, like not only with doing this, but like work on top of it. And just having that hour to sit and like be enthralled in something else, once that's over, I can come back. And even if things are still kind of semi-stressful, I don't feel as stressed about it. So just take yeah. time for you. <laughs> yeah, yes. having a healthy outlet is important. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, for sure. I go to TV, so that's my <laughs> thing. <laughs> I cuddle my dog. <laughs> Yeah. Or a stress workout. <laughs> Please, that was I all like fantastic. Crochet. <laughs> I, crochet is great. It, it's calming. 
Yeah. All of it. Yeah, and then I you have something all profitable had, at you the know, end. something a little bit different to say. That was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I loved all of it. And it's very important. And I thank you guys so much for taking time out of what was probably time you would work on this convention. So I appreciate that. Thank you for coming on. I will see you in June and wish you nothing but the best. <laughs> Thanks for having thank us. Yeah. Thank, thank you for thank having you. us. Support. Yes, for sure. And guys, those were the ladies of the end of the world events. Michaela, Rachel, Jesse, and Rory. Unfortunately, Sam and Nikki, who are the other two members of their team, couldn't make it. But we do appreciate all the work they're doing. And that's that's what they're doing, guys. They're chasing their dream of putting this convention together. I know it's not my typical guest, but I really wanted to bring them on because I was very impressed with the professionalism they were showing with the Kickstarter, the marketing, so on and so forth. And uh, I'm excited. I'm going to try my best to be there. I expect to be there um, and have fun. You know, um, I'm a fan of the hundred, more of a fan of people chasing their dreams. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. So you guys can learn more about end of the world events and what they're doing and more about Congata, which is a take of Trikeldu. I I can't really say it myself, but a language from the hundred. And so you can learn more about that and Congata. And find all the links mentioned today over at amyj21.com slash episode 132. That's episode 132. Thank you once again to our patron sponsors. We would not still be going if it weren't for you guys. If you'd like to donate or learn more about our Patreon campaign, please visit amyj21.com slash Patreon. Every little bit helps, guys, and it is so appreciated. All right. Till next time. Keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with her on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram via at Chasing Dreams HQ. Or you can find Amy on Twitter at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Be sure to visit headquarters over at chasingdreamshq.com for more inspiration, motivation, and resources to help with your own dream chase. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing.